All right, it's December, everyone, so Merry Christmas. And I'm going to be like every other movie critic and every YouTube reviewer on here, I'm going to be recommending movies that you should watch for Christmas. Now, most people are probably going to go on the, along the lines of, you know, Die Hard or um, It's a Wonderful Life, maybe in St. Louis, a Christmas Story, and all of those are great. I love them very much, just like everyone else. I watch them every Christmas. But the one that I'm going to recommend, and what I tend to do whenever I do these Hollywood holiday movie recommendations, I tend to pick movies that are a little bit off the beaten path, things that you may not expect and things that I think deserve a lot more recognition. So that's exactly what I'm going to do for this one today. This is my favorite Christmas movie of all time, and I don't understand why more people don't get into this film. So the film is Shop Around the Corner, and this is directed by a guy named Lubitsch, and it stars... Uh, Jimmy Stewart and Margaret Sullivan. It came out in 1940, I believe, but correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so, and if the film sounds familiar, the title Shop Around the Corner may sound familiar to you, and that's because this film was remade in the 90s in a film that you may have heard of called You've Got Mail, and this stars Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. And immediately, if you're probably thinking, I hated You've Got Mail, I, I really, really hated You've Got Mail, I don't want to see anything remotely like it, then I don't blame you. You've Got Mail is not a very good movie at all. Um, but trust me, this film, although it has a lot of the same plot elements and same themes, it's actually a very different, uh, a very different style, very different film. And it, for three reasons. Number one, it's a lot darker. It's very kind of bittersweet. Yes, it's a comedy, but it's a very, uh, I guess, yes, as I said, it's, it's a darker romantic comedy and it's a lot more complex, number two. And number three, it doesn't rely on a very dated, contrived product placement like it does in uh, You've Got Mail to be the driving force, the crux of the film. You know, with uh, You've Got Mail, it was AOL and the Instant Messenger and that shows you how dated that is. Uh, but this film, although it does have um, writing letters back and forth, it, that it doesn't use that as the primary focus of the film. That's just kind of something that takes place. It's one of the elements of the film. But anyway, I'll give you just a quick synopsis. The film is about a little uh, novelty shop, hence the name, Shop Around the Corner. And most of the movie does take place actually in this shop. And it's run by the Wizard of Oz, Wizard of Oz himself, the uh, actor Frank Morgan. He plays the manager of the shop. And the whole film is about, you know, the all the different people who work there. So it's him, it's Jimmy Stewart, who plays the assistant manager of the shop. It also has, you know, the clerks, the salesmen, the cashiers, everybody. And this girl, this young girl named Clara walks in. And this is played by Margaret Sullivan. And she is in desperate need of a job. So she walks in and asks Frank Morgan if she can have a job. And he says, no, absolutely not. You know, this shop is not doing well as it is. I can't afford any other workers, so no. But she proves herself to be quite a good worker. She's very persuasive and she's wonderful working with people. And she just has a wonderful presence about her, great presentational skills. And he decides, okay, I'll hire her because, you know, she may be a really great addition to the shop. So she works there for many weeks, many months, and she works a lot with James Stewart's character, but the two do not get along at all. Um, they're always fighting whether it's about how ugly her wardrobe is or whether or not, you know, he has a good attitude about things. They're just, they always find something to bicker about. And right there, that's a big difference between this film and You've Got Mail. In that film, Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks meet and initially they really like each other. And the only reason there's a conflict is because the two of them are both uh, in competing businesses and that's where the fighting starts. In this film, it's very different. The two right off the bat do not like each other and it's only later that they start to kind of reveal what kind of people they are underneath. And to me, that's what this whole film is about. Because as I said, uh, the two of them write letters to each other, but they don't know that they're actually writing to each other. They're actually under anonymous names, kind of like pen pals. So she always gets these these letters and she gets so excited about it. And she thinks, oh, you know, this this man who, uh, you know, this, this unknown anonymous man that I'm writing to, he's so sensitive and artistic and, you know, he's intellectual, all these things. But little does she know, it's actually the guy that she's been fighting with and can't stand every single day of her working life. And again, that's what I find so interesting about this film is that the whole idea to me is all about presentational skills. It's about, well, I should say kind of the initial uh, viewing is about that sort of thing. And it's about how we kind of reveal, e reveal ourselves to other people, how much first impressions are important, but in the long run, they really don't mean that much because who you may kind of pretend to be or the person that you try to 
you know, be in order to please other people may not necessarily be the person that you are. And these two find that out, you know, you know, after a while, you know, it takes a while for them to kind of scratch at each other's surfaces to find out who they really are underneath. And their relationship is so complex, but so beautifully kind of, it, it blooms so beautifully. And the characters in this film are all so wonderful. Now, as I said, this film is not nearly as smiley happy as You've Got Mail. It's a lot darker. There are some moments in it that are actually very, very uh, disturbing in some ways. But don't let that deter you. If you want to see something that makes you feel really good on Christmas, this film does make you feel very good. It's got a nice warmth to it. And yes, there are Christmas themes, if that's what you're wondering, why I'm recommending this during Christmas. Um, but yes, I mean, the film, it, it just, it's very warm hearted. And yes, it's kind of bittersweet, but it's, it's just, everything is pitched perfect. The acting is wonderful. The writing is spectacular. Everything about it works so, so well. And I, this is, again, I don't understand why more people don't love this movie. And so that's what I'm trying to do. I, I'm trying to recommend this to more and more people. Um, so yes, definitely see this movie. As I said, it's my all time favorite Christmas movie. And I really, really am that confident that you'll like it. I'm so confident, in fact, that if you don't like it, come back and you can tell me that you're unsubscribing to my channel because i that's how confident I am. I really think that everyone can find something to admire in this film. I recommend this film to all kinds of people, have done so over the last few years. And so many of them come back to me and say, you know, thank you so much. I love this movie. It's my new favorite Christmas movie. And so, and I love hearing that sort of thing. So um, please, you know, comment if you have seen this movie or if you haven't, go see it and then tell me what you think. Um, you can subscribe to me on Twitter and um, I will see you all next time. Thank you very much.